transnational and irregular threats in our region have had far-reaching ramifications. Our experience should therefore provide us with enough wisdom to ensure our determination to protect our nations and the region from being zones of threats to peace and security to being spheres of uh, shared development and prosperity. Helping Africa to address transnational and irregular threats must be a coordinated effort between the academia, security, and the diplomatic communities at national, regional, and global levels. New and emerging threats often give rise to a wide range of possible responses. It is imperative, therefore, that whether as academics, diplomats, or security personnel, we must all seek workable solutions. By bringing together a diversity of perspectives, we can devise comprehensive strategies to this complex issue in the region. Uh, I now give what I consider to be the working definition for my paper, and I will borrow the UN definition of transnational and regular threats, which is as, and I quote, large-scale and complex criminal activities carried out by groups of persons and frequently accomplished through ruthless disregard of any law for the enrichment of those participating and at the expense of the community and its members. I now look at the transnational and irregular threats in the Eastern Africa region. Not all of them, some of them. Crimes of this nature in the region include piracy, trafficking in arms, drugs, and humans, smuggling document, smuggling, document fraud, cyber fraud, money laundering, terrorism, and cattle rustling. Most African regions have revealed, uh, revealed new generation threats to peace and security. It should be recognized, however, that transnational and irregular threats in the core Eastern uh, Africa region are mainly from outside this core. The growing threat of transnational and irregular threats in the Eastern Africa region is influenced by the situation in the Horn of Africa and partly that in the Arabian Peninsula and its vicinity, including Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, and Iran. In the Eastern Africa region, transnational and irregular threats like maritime piracy, terrorism, cybercrime, and identity theft, counterfeiting, money laundering, trafficking in arms, drugs, and humans continue to pose the serious challenges to regional security dynamics. The long history of conflict experienced by the region has weakened the capacity of individual states to address transnational and irregular threats. Regional and sub-regional bodies, among others including the African Union, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, the East African Community, and the International Conference on the Great Lakes Region, have, uh, uh, and COMESA, have all recognized that peace and security is a prerequisite meaningful and effective collaboration in combating transnational and irregular threats. Enhancing security or reducing insecurity in the Eastern Africa region is therefore a high priority to all these organizations and other stakeholders in the region. I'll now talk about uh, uh, common security, and I'll say the idea of common security and the widening security agenda have found practical expression in regional member states. However, the battle against transnational and irregular threats at the regional and international level can prove particularly challenging in light of the difficulties uh, inherent in establishing common norms among participating states. Now I'll talk about terrorism because, as you already have heard, this is uh, a threat that has been uh, unleashed on the populations of this region for a number of decades now. Over the recent past, 
transitional terrorism has emerged as a serious threat to peace and security across Eastern Africa. Several major groups with terrorist ties, including Harakat al Shabaab and uh, Hezbo uh, Islamia, have facilitated the emergence of Al Qaeda East African cell, uh, which group undertook the 1998 USA embassy in East Africa bombings and the 2002 Kikambala bombings with a failed attempted attack in two, uh, 200, uh, 2003 on the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi, and later masterminded the July 2010 Kampala terror attacks. I've seen increased recruit recruitment of foreign fighters from the Somali diaspora, from across Africa, and from other terrorist groups globally. Several terrorist fighters continue to enter the Eastern Africa region from North Africa, uh, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, and from Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And, region, and regional terrorists such as Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, and Al-Shabaab are wide and complex and have executed various forms of terrorism in Africa. While large crowds enthusiastically watched the July 2015 FIFA World Cup soccer, uh, soccer finals at a local rugby club and in a downtown Kampala restaurant, terror struck the Ugandan capital with bombings, with bombs ripping through the gatherings, killing 76 people and wounding 85. El Shabab quickly claimed responsibility for the attack. The ability of Al Shabaab and other terrorist organizations, including the Al Qaeda, to operate and strike throughout Eastern Africa has in part been because of the region's porous borders, weak government, weak government structures, and inadequate judicial and law enforcement mechanisms aimed at combating these dangerous and lawless groups and their activities. Because of its uh, territorial proximity to Somalia, as well as the current lack of robust border security and sufficient resources to carry out a concerted counter-terrorism offensive, Kenya has been most susceptible to further terrorist attacks. But El Shabaab is not the only uh, non-state actor. That has posed and in some cases continue to pose a regional terrorist threat in Eastern Africa. Over the years, numerous terrorist attacks have been attributed to groups such as the Janjaweed in the Sudan, the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Allied Democratic Forces in the DRC Congo, the Just and Equity Movement in the, in the Sudan, the Lord's Resistance Army of Joseph Kony, now operating in Central African Republic and the DRC after having been flushed out of Northern Uganda by the Uganda People, People's Defense Forces in 2007 and some other armed non-state groups in Ethiopia. I'll now look at uh, the proliferation of small arms and light weapons again as uh, another uh, 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 threat worth focusing on. Commenting on uh, trafficking in small arms and light weapons, Mr. Sala Mick observes, and I quote, the complex nature of illicit arms trafficking has prom prompted coordinated regional action. This has proved to be the most successful approach to date in areas as diverse as Southern, uh, Southern Africa, West Africa, Europe, and the Americas. While almost all regional organizations, including the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the Organization on Security and Cooperation in Europe, and the 54-member 54, 54 state Commonwealth, Commonwealth have issued statements endorsing the need for attention to small arms issues, it is the regional level, uh, it is at the regional level that illicit trafficking has been specifically prioritized. The three regional agreements that apply to the Eastern Africa region and the Horn of Africa include the Bamako Declaration of Small Arms, 
2000, the Nairobi Declaration on the Proliferation of Illicit Small Arms and Light Weapons in the Great Lakes Region, 2000, and the April 2004 Protocol on the Prevention, Control, and Reduction of Small Arms and Light Weapons in the Great Lakes Region and the Horn of Africa. The total number of small arms in Eastern Africa is unknown. Studies have put the figure at 640 million in a circulation worldwide, with 100 million of that believed to be on the uh, African continent. Certainly a big percentage of that 100 is within the Eastern Africa region. A word on trafficking. Trafficking is defined, and uh, I give a definition which you can look at when the paper comes to you eventually. It's from Black's Law Dictionary. And I continue to say that drug, human, and trafficking of animals, product, animal products continue to pose uh, serious challenges to regional security dynamics. In a report by the United Nations Officer on Drug and Crime, uh, it was noted, and I quote, Transnational organized crime manifests in many forms, including trafficking in drugs, firearms, and even persons. At the same time, organized crime groups exploit human mobility to smuggle migrants and undermine financial systems through money laundering. The vast sums of money involved can compromise legitimate economies and directly affect public process, processes by buying elections through corruption. It yields high, high profits for its culprits and results in high risk for individuals who fall victim to it. Every year, countless uh, individuals lose their uh, lives at the hands of criminals involved in organized crime, succumbing to drug-related health problems or injuries inflicted by firearms, or losing their lives as a result of the unscrupulous methods and motives of human traffickers and smugglers of migrants. Um, a word on disease. In Eastern Africa, transnational epidemic prone diseases, including uh, cholera, typhoid, fever, malaria, uh, meningitis, plague, uh, a plague, dysentery, measles, yellow fever, and uh, uh, fevers like Ebola and Marburg continue to pose, to pose a big threat in the region from, to, from time to time, either directly or indirectly. I also talk about biological and chemical agents. The potential coverage between dangerous biological and chemical agents and terrorist groups uh, with a propensity to commit acts of mass violence undoubtedly continue to pose a serious threat to regional and international security. I'll look at the uh, proximity to the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, proximity to and close links with the Arabian Peninsula, the source of radical Islamist ideology, uh, has made it easy for the propagators of radicalization to enter and operate in the Eastern Africa region, especially along the, co the coastline. Then the problem of porous borders. Porous border zones continue to constitute threats to states and communities in the entire Eastern Africa region. Since most of the border management and control posts are located in remote areas with no access to hydroelectric power, supply. The only viable form of power supply is solar and thermal energy, which is also often too expensive for these centers to install. I talk about ungoverned spaces. These have helped the increase in criminal groups using these spaces to plan, organize, and execute criminal activities in the region. The examples are found in Somalia and the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, and some parts of the Sudan and the Central Africa Republic. Other enabling factors include weak legal and institutional framework, weaknesses in, gov in good governance and uh, the rule of law, colonial legacies affecting legal systems, languages, and cultures, and the rise of radical Islamist <coughs> groups. 
all by the actions of, uh, of all against any state or group which might challenge the existing order by use of force. The scheme for collective security in 1629, which was partly reflected in the, the Baha'i faith, prescribed collective security as a means of establishing world peace in his writings during the 19th century. Largely seen as a, a synthesis of idealism and classic political realism in its approach to international security. Securitization is an extreme version of politicization that is perceived to be security threats. Collective security, therefore, is achievable by setting up an international cooperational organization limited in scope and effectiveness. The collective security organization then becomes an arena for diplomacy, balance of regional responses to combating uh, transnational and irregular threats. It should seriously resort to and fully embrace collective security desired regional response to transnational and irregular threats. Regional ge uh, governments are signatory to the Dar es Salaam Declaration and the, the, Ngoro, the Ngorodoto Agreement. Uh, I give some details about the, some of them, but that, that you can see from the paper. The mechanisms provide uh, an outline of a vision for broader security, for border security management, as well as other border security infrastructure for sustainable peace and development. In the, the Lusaka ceasefire agreement is another uh, mechanism uh, which which uh, also is in place. Uh, you could look, you will look at the details therein. Uh, a word on uh, institution in dealing with transnational and regular threats through cooperation, coordination, and mutual assistance. And these include uh, cooperation in the intelligence services through which, uh, which uh, act, uh, acts through the implementation of the uh, systems. Uh, there is also agency cooperation through signing of joint memoranda, as I have indicated above. Then inter-agency meetings, which include uh, the watch list of suspected persons, national threats, uh, transnational and uh, irregular threats. Share the ecosystems without collective security. The existence of weak states, including the existence of ungoverned spaces to combat transnational and irregular threats, lack of harmonized extradition treaties among the states of the region. The existence of covert have not been ratified by any member states in the region. They should be urged to ratify, ratify, to ratify and uh, uh, domesticate created in the region to ensure effective containment of transnational and irregular deaths. Ultimately, and I say ultimate view, a piece of food that is worth keeping alive on the menu at the table of the Eastern.